and we are back here at Paul Gym. Losing or at the moment with a deficit of eight points to nil from Paul Rett. That's a half-time score. Crystal Lotta trying to encourage his players and to take them to, to a victory at their home ground. This is what happened in the first half. Carry on and the play from Torpedo. Just the handling errors have been very difficult. And there have been lots of penalties in the scrum. Especially from the loose head, Kevin van der Berg. It was Reynold Fontaine who got the early points on the board for the Stellenbosch outfit with a well-struck penalty. Those are not the only points to come from Paul Roos as they set up from a 10 over ball. They did launch an attack. Fontaine being prominent with the ball carrying just outside the five meter line. But look at the sublime skills from the schoolboys from Paul Roos. A brilliant work by the captain Michael Mayer who found an ever willing recipient in Matt Gallo. And that was the only try of the first half as Paul Roos went into the break at 8-0 to the good against the host Paul Jim. Half-time score, Paul Jim, nil and eight to Paul Roos, away from home. And we had to set off the second half. Paul Jim playing from left, from right to left, but doesn't even get the pass. That's the conditions we under. Michael Mayer and the loose forwards from Paul Roos react. The pick and go is Prinsler. Chanchis. They've talked about playing the territory. Keenan Abrams, how good is he on a high ball? Uh, Keenan Abrams, number 21. Keenan Abrams, unfortunately for the young man, just got himself into a bad position. His feet went from under him. He's knocked it on. He's given Paul Rose an early attacking opportunity here in the second half with a sizable blind side to work with. He doesn't have to catch it with his feet, though, Gary. Had his hands out. Well, I know the viewers at home won't be able to see the conditions, but it is somewhat torrential at the moment. An opportunity here for Paul Rose, just inside the 22. See blind side big enough to have an attack Nico Leonard right wing for Poirot looking ahead on to him the two men marshalling the blind side and because of the conditions have deteriorated to such an extent players like Eric Fenta come into the mix to set targets to really get Paul Ross over that game line and get his forwards into the game. Chances. This ground is good from Paul Ross. Fontaine, Fenta coming on the switch, but he knocks on the ball into the tackle. Cleaning things up is Tahir Squirt. And he gives it down to the touchline is Walter Smith. Paul Jim will be mindful of the fact that they haven't lost against Paul Roos in seven years at home. And of course, they'll be somewhat desperate as was the chat from Christoph Lotte at halftime to his charges. To the back of the line out, Paul Roos, fainter, given to his center. Matt Geller, over advantage line, John Chis. Fontaine, Capita takes it on the drift, Capita takes it on the drift, there's a look for the inside, Nicola in it, who's that? Oh, was it in the touch? It's play on, Pro Rose with the second try of the game, Capita taking the ball on the drift, looking for his side support from Nicola in it, the right winger, and Dean Fantonde, Loose forward, supporting and backing up his outside backs. Brilliant work by Paul Rus. The drift pass found its way to Aidan Kipido. He popped it inside. And it was Dean Fantonda 
the hard-working number seven flanker who's got in for Paul Russo's second try of the afternoon. And this kick now becomes absolutely vital. It'll put them 15 points ahead if he can knock it over. More than two scores for Paul Jim to make up that deficit. So Tate, it's a bit off the wind and the breeze that's picked up that's coming against him. So he has to be steady with his kick. And he pulls it to the side. Fontaine doesn't convert the try. 13 points to nil. Russ lead this game. But what a pass by Fontaine. He found Kipido, sauntered into the gap. And then the inside ball to Dean Fantonda, who's got in for the second try of the afternoon. Back into the game. Kick off from Parcher. Walter Smith inside to his eighth man. Penalty stealing up. Swart has come on for Conradi. Well, of course, a few weekends ago on Super Sport, Paul Ruiz relinquished a 26 to 0 lead against Gray, Port Elizabeth, and lost it in the last minute. You wonder if that'll be impacting on their conscience now if Paul Jim get over and get a try. You mentioned that, but they, they, they did come back and recover from that loss. And I mean, they massacred King, uh, King Edward VII by 60 points to seven. So they do know what to do. But they are not here. Oh, poor pops out, and then he loses it. Oh. Well, it's become like a piece of salt, Gavani. Oh, it is a very slippy conditions testing the skill set of the both teams. But well, it was a missed throw initially by Moku Mostert. Both players converging on it. It looked like the Paul Jim player was in for all money under the bar. But again, it's a knock on that could tell the try scoring opportunity for the host. Different hooking position, or oh, man in position. It's Momi Sali, a hooker for. Oh, pull on the floor, fainter. What does he do? Oh, driven out. It's five meter scrum for Paul Jim. The pressure came in at scrum time from Paul Jim. The pass from Yankees was an absolute shocker. Edric Fenter had little or no opportunity to clear his lines. Good offensive work by the home side. Well, Fenter does well to secure position. Most important, not playing on till the ref's whistle. But ball now, five meter scrum for Paul Jim. Opportunity now, scrum off on the blind side. 8-9 goes to Cocker and looks up for the space. Does he get the momentum? Yes, under the poles, the captain leads his side. Reaction, opportunity taken by the captain. Sandre so Tikaka leads it from the front. 8-9, opportunity breaking on the inside of his lap. Scores the try. Paul Jim on board. Five points. Well, from the scrum, the replacement number eight, MJ Hayes, fed the diminutive scrum off. Zandre de Quirka, he looked after the ball as he was propelled forward over the whitewash. And in the interim, Volta Smith has managed to knock over the conversion. But it all started from the base. They got the right shoulder. Great work by the captain. His control of the ball under the arm was superb. And he's in for Paul Jim's first try. And it's brought them right back into this game. Oh, 13 points to seven, 43 minutes gone in the second half. For Tate with the kickoff. Kerry back to his outside center. Offload and the tackle. Grant Williams. 
Oh, into the touchline, marshaled well by his opposite number, Nicole Lennard. Well, it just highlights the importance of kicking your goals on a day like today. Ran out for town, has missed a few opportunities that would have put them well clear on the scoreboard. However, the try has allowed Paul to jump back into this contest. And you just talk about momentum shifts. Well, one feels that it's going the way of the home side at the moment. Interesting call, they're not in straight. And just a way for felt that he mocked his throw in. Chupido underneath this ball. Well positioned from the fullback, keeps it on the floor, which is a great option. There's a way filled and it's skid. Into the touchline, just into the 22. And Peter having a good game. Intelligent play by the lanky fullback, keeping it on the ground, skidding it into touch. And allowing his pack to contest the line and put, up, uh, put pressure on this pole jump throw. Conditions have deteriorated since the start of the game. Starting to test the players. Ramir Sari, the number 16 reserve front rower. Again, at the line of time, good work contesting. Coming in from Paul Russ, but unfortunately, the replacement, Sali, just knocking the ball on. Forty-five minutes gone in this game. Thirteen points to seven. Taurus lead. Paul Jim. Game is on. It's grammar strong from Taurus. Paul Jim the secure position. Abrams is replacing Detroit number twenty-one. Replacing number twenty-three. Stepping from Kapita. Kapita making major yards yet, yeah. gaining meters for the away team. Knock on from Janchis that he was impeded deep in the tackle by Licha to the blind side. Now they go to Cocker. Saw him with the try, inspired the team. Kapita, Adian with his left foot. Does he find the touch line? There's a man down from Poirier. So he's offside. Game is on. Smith stepping, keeping the ball. Cocker. Van der Berg, big burly loose head prop from Paul Jim. Coming on a short, challenging line is Marco Mostad. De Cocker. Carry on by Licha. Smith. Oh, opportunity's gone a begging again. His handling errors pile up in this game. And it's all starting to swing the way of the home side. Catch passing becoming also important, not the greatest of passes. But unfortunately, Billy Small just taking his eye off the ball. Oh, I'll be disappointed in his effort. In a game that's been littered with handling errors, Gubani. If Paul Russ wants to come away victors, they need to capitalise on these mistakes being given to them on a platter by Paul Jim. Oh, that is Charles Detroit, the man with the number 23 jersey, coming off the bench to replace the number 21, Abrams, who moves back to the bench, and they drop back Grant Williams to fullback. So a bit of rearrangements for... Well, it's a strong scrum there from Paul Chen. Pressure. Peter's done well every time he's carried the ball. Fontaine, Reynard, Williams notifying the assistant referee that the ball was taken back into his 22. And they go back inside their own 22, they lose a lot of territory there. Paul under, Russ. Pres under pressure, Paul Russia yeah, starting to make elementary errors. That's allowing Paul jump back into the, the game. Not. It's been constant drizzle 
constant drain, constant rain, and uh, even our with him, our cameraman are uh, taking the strain, finding shelter back. Paul Jim getting to the 22. Look at the show business, what's going on? Detroit. Coming around, it's, it's like, now they're starting to strike some plays. Bit of continuity coming in now for Paul Jim inside the 22. They make the yards. Van der Berg keeps the ball, fights strong in the tackle. Cocker, Cocker. Oh, lost in the contact there by McDonald. And it's a penalty in front of the poles for offside. Offside in midfield were the maroon machine. And a dangerous opportunity here for Forrest was averted. However, yeah, just Michael Mayer, the captain, came off hard off the line. But they're not out of jail. They've conceded a penalty right in front, which is pretty much a gimme for a kicker of Walter Smith's calibre. I've heard you've seen you do those. <laughs> it's always difficult in front of the poles. Yeah. You have to admit. Yeah, and every kicker's missed one right in front. And it's over. Smith, five points for him with the conversion and the penalty now makes it 10 points to Paul Jim. 50 minutes gone, Poirous leads still by 13 points to 10. And you can see, we enjoyed it. Supported, as you know, 1,200 pupils from Paul Jim enjoying it's seen the team making a comeback after they were 13 points to nil just in the start of second half. But with the exit play, Grant Williams puts it on the floor. Detroit anticipates well. Has a head clash a bit there with Michael Mayer, but he's worked hard to compete downstairs. Clever play by Grant Williams, just finding the space in behind Paul Russ. Takes quite well, a limited opportunity he's had in the back line. He's made the most of it, but there the handing errors 25 in 51 minutes. Both sets of coaches won't be overawed by that stat. I don't think they'll be that hardly done. They know it's quite challenging with the rain. Chances. Strike is good again. Oh, cameraman. Braving up the conditions, giving you these pictures. Well, you'll see in front of us Jerome Koff, the tight head of Paul Russ up against Gavin van der Berg, the loose head. Koff had the bit of him in the first half. But here we see ear to ear. They'll be going at it, hammer and tongs in the front row with these two front rankers. Uh, for me, from the biggest difference is the shape of their backs. But Janchi's looking to up, take the opportunity over the 10 meter line. Janchi's gets to the 22. Clean is good from Poros. Oh. Guess he can't do it all. He can't take the ball into the scrum. Well, again, it's Herschel Yankees from the base of that. The flank is too slow to get onto him. He evades one or two defenders. Does brilliantly well to get in behind Paul Jim. But then again, it's those small mistakes that are coming to haunt the side from Stellenbosch. Just felt sometimes as a, as a, as a man where the ball is in the inside, I don't think he should drift. Maybe Zandra Cocker there should, to Cocker should first tackle and then chase him from the inside of the ball. Chanchi's putting pressure on his opposite number. Uh, they do well to maintain position. Contest has been strong here. Smith. Kipita underneath it. Uh, eyes looked good. Looks for an opportunity to put Fanamerva into the game. Fanamerva goes down low. Cracks on the pace over the halfway line. 
penalty advantage here from Fenter. Looks for the territory. Udi does he? And we saw the referee playing the advantage. Don't feel that as an advantage. Uh, poor call by the ref. Advantage was definitely not over. But you'll see in the maroon and grey sc scrum cap with the bright orange boots. Mitchell Carstens, he's made his way onto the field. He's been out of action for the last three or so weeks with concussion. But he's a effervescent flanker. He's into everything. And he'll certainly bring a lot of energy to this Paul Roos side. To Parker. Captain taking it up. Carstens, Mitchell makes the turnover into the tackle, but it's a pick and go. Well, you mentioned him and his thoughts shows his credibility. Was under a quirk, he just needed to run straight in. instead. He ran at the man instead of the space. The ball being dislodged. And this is ever going to play the better territory game. He's going to play the more intelligent style of rugby. He's going to come out on top here this afternoon. It's not really coming down now. The rain is starting to calm down a little bit. But the conditions, the ball is wet, the field is wet. Uh, might be not the spectacle we're all be waiting for. Well, of course, Paul Rose having produced 51 Springboks. It's unbelievable. Stat out of the Stellenbosch school. Well, Paul Jim had a centre pairing of Barry and Jaber who graced these fields many years ago. And I'm sure both those old boys will be doing their old school side on and Scott Bird's coming from Paul Rose no he's done very well with the Saracens over in the UK Chances. oh does he overcook it yep yeah, he does putting it on the floor with a bit of a grabber will help him three subs just come on Number 17 from Polaris, Robert Matt, Matty. Chances move on to the wing. Calvin now to the scrum up position for Polaris. Now looking to go behind Smart. Bounces does well to clean up that really small. Cocker. Take for Mayer, the captain. Capito. Oh, lining him up. But does well is from the Mava in the tackle. Now, looking for the territory game. Maybe that's why he's on the field. But he's gone too far. Williams, what does he do? All right, complimented by running again. Chanchis has got the possession now. Makes the right decision to keep it up in hand. Pick and goes from the reserve player, Christian Harmon. Slowly building the phases now, poor Rust. It's four to the trenches now, but poor Rust keeping the ball. Possession, 57 minutes gone in this game. As you know, play 70 minutes. The rain has died down now for Tane and Fainter. Fainter does well to get away from him, but spinning in the tackle. That's for Tane. Now looking for the opportunity on this man on his outside. Chanchis does well to secure position. Great work by. Run out for Tani, got over the game line. He was in behind that Paul Jim pack that just needed to hold on to the ball at Paul Roos. Unfortunately, looking for the Hail Mary pass overhead was the replacement scrum off now. And it's an attack that's again come to naught for the maroon machine. But you, you feel whoever scores next, well, I could end up victors in this contest. 
massive hit on Calvin now, but put a risk your position. The pick and go, keeping it up with the forwards now. Going to the side, the 22. Changing a bit of direction. Accuracy being the key for either side. Defensively, protecting what's important to you, which is the ball, and defending what's important to you. The try line, go to the outside. Fontaine puts it on the foot. Cover, good from Fisser. McDonald, and it's a ball retrieved back and a bit of relief for Paul Jim, but they've been under the cosh in the second half. I'm always a great believer, when you're red out on attack, why put it on the boot? Set the target, your rucking has been good, your forwards have come into the game well. And again, it's opportunity here for Paul Rose to launch another attack. Competing is good, going back to the captain, Zandre de Kocka. Closely played now by Paul Jim, the pick and go, call of the day. Taking his hands off the ball and his eye. Smith will be very disappointed with his effort there. The pass coming in again, it's the wrong option. Put it on the boot, play the territory. He's taken his eye off the ball as Walter Smith. That's handed a real opportunity now for Paul Ruiz to put this game to bed. Michael Mayer will he'll either set the target or feed the Burnley inside centre, Yedrick Fenter, as oh. the sun begins to creep its way through the clouds here. Creasing that with its presence. It's one of those days down in the Cape. Bit of wind, bit of rain, bit of sunshine. And a sprinkle of handling errors. 60 minutes gone now. Porus lead by 13 points to 10 against Paul Jim. Now, Fenter sets up the play. Defense is strong from Detroit. Number 23 for Paul Jim. Carrying into the 22 now as the forward. Now, looking to kill Art. Errors to an error, unforced errors. As we have the redemption of the school song from Paul Rose. As they three points up, trying to encourage the maroon machine. Sounds a lot like a flower of Scotland. Ball in by Zandra de Kaka. Very buoyant crowd from Poiris. Scrum, strong from Torres. Oh, dropped again by Walter Smith, but Riffy Falter went backwards. Recovery coming on to first receiver now. Oh, another one. Oh, they're dropping lollies here. Oh, okay, it's the cake soap. Well, it's just become roadshow errors here in Paul. 
fortunate deep. Both sides can't hold on to the ball. Walter Smith at first and then takes squirt. And this was take squirt taking his eye off the ball. And then the chip overhead being knocked on by Paul Roos. Detroit, scrum inside. Uh, improvised kick from the captain, Zandre Dukaka. Well, for, for the majority of this game, the home side has been outplayed. Yet on the scoreboard, they're still within touching distance. So they just need to get into the opposition's half. Somehow, forge a penalty of sorts go from there but that's a well-worked line of drive coming in with Mitchell Carstens at the tail good tactics from Torres keeping the ball Fenter oh testing pass from now 64 minutes gone six minutes go to go 13 points to 10 Torres lead Opportunity now for Poros to play some territory rugby. Walter Smith, well, he needs to catch the ball first before he can think about playing some territory. Cocker goes for long. Kapita calls for the ball. The fullback has been steady under that ball. Chose not to run. Keeping the ball back. And it does well. Because Smith has kicked it out directly and they stay up on this field. Well, Walter Smith, he would have wanted to have a good train today here for his home side. Unfortunately, it hasn't been a day to remember for the pivot. Well, the line out's been a luxury for both sides. It's a bit of a drive now coming in for Paul Ruiz. Now, for Tane, Fenter. Dalla Matt taking a straight direct route to Torrid Strong in the tackle for Paul Jim. No. Showing some good hands, keeping the ball alive as Paul Rush changing direction. Kerry is from the Lach Biekas. Playing a part in it, Klute. Pick and go, surging and keeping the ball close. As Beresford for Tane. Ball went backwards for the referee. Now, ball is slow. Looking to plays. Scrum off, starting scrum off. Chances on the wing. Penalty against Paul Jim, the home side. 13 points to 10, 67 minutes gone, and Cupido is going to line this one up. And you'll see Adam Cupido strolling up to take this kick a goal after Raymond Fortin has been unsuccessful with three attempts. Of course, Adam C Cupido, son of Former Western Province centre, Wilfred Kipido. Who's that? Eager watcher. Here down here, Paul. And he'll be, he'll be absolutely delighted if Kipido can knock us over. He'll put Paul Roos into a six point lead. Two minutes left in the game. Opportunity to stretch it to 16. And yes, it's over. 16 points to 10. Poor Rose lead. But we've seen other things happen in a rugby game. Two minutes to go. 
Kickoff getting back into the half will be Paul Jim. If they score a converted try, they win it. Goes long and well taken there by the reserve. Robbie Matti. Goes high from the box kick. Janchi's competing. Gets the ball back. Mayer kicks it on. Oh, that is a knock on. Doing the basics right as Poirous. Not trying to play any rugby inside their half. Well, of course, the rivalry is massive between these two schools. And of course, the two towns separated by 30 kilometers of stretch. And not only will it be the bragging rights come Monday, but it will also be a tick in the right box for the Craven Week selectors, who I'm sure have been watching this game pretty intensely. It's been a long time since Paul Ruiz won over here in 2005. 2006 to be corrected. Fatane, Fenter, carries strongly as he's been aimed the whole afternoon. Now, a few seconds left now in this game. Poros pick and go, just trying to wind down the clock. Mitchell Carstens edging it forward, but they don't want to be caught for ceiling. As the siren goes in the background, and the penalty comes in for Poros. And all they need to do is hack it into touch, and it'll be all over by the shouting for the visitors. Reynard Fortain does just that. And of course, it's Paul Russell's first victory down here in Paul since 2006. As the Stellenbosch schoolboys begin to stream onto the field. And what a game we've had down here in Paul. It was littered with handling errors, but it wasn't helped at all by the inclement weather. But the delight is palpable on the Paul Roos boys' faces. As both sets of players shake hands. So there you have it, down here from Paul, it's the visitors, Paul Roos, who've come away victors by 16 points to 10 in this Mutual and Federal Premier Inter-Schools clash.